Hello, how are you doing? Do you have a sense of the differences between Langchain versus Langgraph? Do you understand which one to use based on your use case? Well, if not, then watch along with me for the next few minutes and I'll quickly get you up to speed. Okay, let's get started. To start, I wanna compare four aspects of these two frameworks. The first is workflow structure. Langchain is really good when implementing DAG or linear workflows. DAG stands for Directed Acyclic Graphs. Think of this as a data structure with no iterations, loops, or cycles. You can think of Langchain as executing a chain of steps in an LLM-driven workflow. Langchain does support simple branching, but does not explicitly support iterations or cycles. Langgraph, as the name implies, is designed out of the box to handle graph style workflows. Being able to handle graph style workflows means being much better at handling complex nonlinear workflows, which include nested branching, merging, iterations, cycles, and loops. Agentic and multi actor use cases tend to require more complex workflows, so Langgraph tends to be a good fit for these types of systems. The second aspect is state management. Langchain supports implicit state management. With implicit state management, Langchain automatically manages and passes relevant data, such as inputs and outputs, between different steps in a workflow without requiring explicit user-defined structures to store and track state. This approach simplifies chaining tasks, but it comes with limitations in handling complex workflows where fine-grained control over state transitions is required. Alternatively, Langgraph has explicit state management. When we say it has explicit state management, we mean that Langgraph requires developers to define, manage, and control the state of the workflow explicitly throughout the execution. This approach gives developers fine-grained control over data flow, task dependencies, and intermediate results, making it suitable for complex workflows with branching, looping, or multi-agent interactions. The third aspect is flexibility. Langchain is not as flexible when it comes to being able to handle complicated workflows. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it's better suited for simple, LLM-driven workflows. Langgraph, on the other hand, is more flexible. Quick note, Langgraph can handle simple linear workflows, but it shines when it's used with more complex workflows that include branching, nested conditions, merging loops, and dynamic transitions that depend on runtime state. The last aspect is code complexity. Langchain is fairly easy to understand, and you can get up to speed fairly quickly. Now, it's normally used to implement simpler workflows which also contributes to make it easier to implement a solution with Langchain. Langgraph, on the other hand, is a bit more complicated and takes more time to get up to speed. Langgraph normally is used to implement more complex workflows, so likely this also contributes to make it harder to use when implementing solutions. Okay, so now we compare the aspects of Langchain versus Langgraph, and I wanna show you some workflow examples. The first workflow is fairly simple and is easily implemented using Langchain. The workflow is initiated by passing a city and an email address. The workflow first calls a weather service passing the city using a weather API endpoint. The weather results are returned. And in the second step, an LLM is passed the weather results and prompted to summarize the weather and generate an email body. In the last step, an email is sent out using the email body generated in the previous step. You can see this is a simple step-by-step -step linear workflow. So now let's add a bit more complexity to the workflow. In this second modified workflow, we get the weather for a city. Next, we prompt the LM to determine if the weather is good or bad. If it's bad, a text is sent. Otherwise, an email is sent. The modified workflow has some simple branching. And as I mentioned earlier, Langchain does have support for simple branching. 
So you could implement this easily with Langchart. So now let's modify this workflow one more time to include looping. Here, we pass in a list of cities and emails. In this workflow, we want to get the weather, build an email body, and send an email within a loop that iterates through the list. So can LangChain handle looping? As I mentioned earlier, no, not explicitly. Now, you could make this work, but you'd have to do a lot more work, including incorporating your own custom Python logic and state management. With this modified workflow containing looping, this is where LangGraph starts to become way more attractive. Looping is a core feature that makes LangGraph suitable for complex workflows where tasks need to be repeated based on conditions or state updates. Okay, so the big question is, which framework should you use? Well, it all depends on your use case and your objectives. LangChain works well for simpler linear workflows. LangChain supports simple branching and gives you simple state management, but it's limited. LangChain excels for quick prototyping, providing a rich set of pre-built integrations and utilities. Alternatively, LangGraph shines in cases with more complicated workflows, where they have loops, cycles, and conditional branches, or multiple outputs feeding into subsequent steps. LangGraph also gives you explicit state handling for greater control and flexibility in state management. So in the end, there's no right or wrong framework. It really all depends on your use case and your objectives. Okay, quick note. I've created a video on LangChain where I provide an overview of this framework. Feel free to check it out if you're interested. Additionally, I've created a second video on LangGraph. Just like the LangChain video, I provide a high-level overview of this framework. Again, feel free to check this out if you're interested. Okay. Thanks for watching. This video, along with all the other videos in this playlist, are listed in the YouTube description. I welcome you to check all of these out as well. I invite you to watch other videos on my channel. If you like the way I'm sharing this content, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe, this really helps my channel grow. One last thing, we all love technology, and we're all excited about all the innovation with the cloud and machine learning and AI. But don't forget to carve out some time to live in the real world. Go outside, go swimming, go hiking, go climbing, go surfing, but get out and move your body. And if you do, let me know in the comments. I wanna hear about it. And with that, have a great day, thanks.